Welcome, guys, um, to episode number four of the podcast. Today we have a very special guest with us, um, a different topic, I think a topic that is very, very relevant right now and very important that we talk about this. Um, today with us is Nemo. Um, Nemo, please take a second to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about you. Hi, my, Marcus. First, I just wanted to say thank you so much for having me. It's a real pleasure to have you on your on your podcast. So I, I'm really um, grateful and uh, privileged to be on your on your on your platform today. So just to say a bit about myself. So I'm a, I'm a psychologist that originally trained in the UK. Um, so I spent the last 12 years in the NHS, the National Health Service in the UK, um, training, um, you know, working as a psychologist, training other healthcare professionals as well, um, specialising in helping to treat people with depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, OCD, um, people with physical health chronic problems like diabetes as well, uh, doing couples therapy as well, working okay. with trauma. So it's a vast ara um, array of, you know, I was really privileged to be able to work with quite a lot of people with various different difficulties and, and helping them um, okay. get better, really, okay. and helping them uh, with a better quality of life. Really. But, but now you're in Doha. Since when yes, are you I'm here? In Doha. <laughs> So I moved to Doha in July uh, of 2019. So I'm still a newbie in, in okay. Doha. So, but I've, I've I've really been enjoying being here. Um, I I I got married in July, and then I moved over here to to be with my husband, who's who's been here for about eight years. So he's he's okay. he's been here quite a while. So okay. um, so I'm I'm still a newbie, but um, and but really really enjoying being. Here. Good to have you in Doha. Welcome. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not that I've been here forever, but uh, two and a half years. So I, I feel like welcome you to welcoming you to to Doha and to Qatar. Um, how was it so far for you? How do you like it? I really like it. It's, the weather is really lovely. You know, obviously coming from London, uh, the, where <laughs> you, you never know whether yes, you're okay. planning for snow, whether you're planning for hailstone, or so you can have all the different seasons in one day. Okay. <laughs> in, in London. And so here it's nice to be able to predict what, what you're going to have, what weather you're going to have every day. And the people are, are really lovely. You know, um, there's lots to do here, lots to, lots to see. So it's, it's been really wonderful. It's, been, it's okay. been wonderful. I'm really happy to be here, really. Okay. Um, we, we will speak yeah. again in two to three months time when the summer hits and we will talk about the weather again. <laughs> I, do you know when I came in July? Remember July? I have to say, um, oh, okay, true. It was, you... a bit of a shock. it was a bit of a shock. I'd walk out of the house thinking, oh, I've got all this energy. I'm going to do all of these things. As soon as I walk out, I felt like the energy was just drained from me. But, but I think coming from the London, I was so excited. I didn't even see. I didn't even kind of. I was just so ready to go out. And oh my god, there's so much sun. I need to. So maybe this year, I'll, I'll now that I'm a bit more settled, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll be shocked by by this by the warmth again because I heard it gets really really hot. And yeah, it gets it gets humid as well. Um, before that, mostly before it gets uh, really dry and hot, we we always had have a bit of a humid season before that. Um, we always say, um, or a friend a friend told me the the heat is introduced by humid and is like being said goodbye from humidity as well so let's let's see <laughs> hope it's not too bad this year yeah we I had mean, a bit of rain as well we had rain we had hail we had we had quite of a, a weird weather recently yeah that's true Maybe that's because I'm here and I brought the London weather with me where you have hailstones of rain. I was really shocked. I was like, oh my God, what's happening? It's raining. It's, it's so much, you know, hailstone. I was really shocked. Is that, does that happen quite often here? Um, beside, I think it was the, was it the winter of 2018 where we had really bad, bad floods in, in Qatar? Um, rain is not really something that is here a lot. We always celebrate if it rains because I mean this the smell from from back home when when it starts raining it's 
I don't know, it, it feels special when it rains here and people are, are really celebrating it when it's not too much because in 2018 we really, it was, it was quite terrible. Um, flooded streets, um, it was way too much um, in a very short period of time. Um, but yeah, that, that was back then. Now we are enjoying the rain when it, when it hits us, I would say. Um, and I mean, now we are, I guess you're, you're the same. We're spending most of our days at the moment at home anyway. So if it rains or not, the days are quite, quite monotone. And besides maybe leaving the house for groceries, I'm, I'm sure maybe you don't, you don't do a lot either. Um, because this is pretty much how, how the day for me and also for my team I, I know, uh, looks like and for many friends. Um, it's basically getting up in the morning um, and then going nowhere <laughs> besides maybe to the office to your laptop and the same in the evening. So how, how have you experienced this so far, um, the whole COVID-19 corona crisis? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a really, obviously, it's it's a very unusual time that we're in right now. It's a very, there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot going on in the news and, you know, different updates all the time. And But it's 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 a very challenging time, for, I think, for, for a lot of us, especially the one, you know, those are a lot of people that are used to being so active and being outdoors. I love being outdoors and um mm. you know enjoying the sun and doing you know trying to to maintain being active and obviously you know that's kind of changed overnight uh you know in a very short space of time so you know obviously it's kind of trying to adapt that trying to 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 do the things that you were doing but in house in 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 the house is is is, is difficult you know you miss seeing friends and fa- you know family as well even though i don't have family here it's, I think it must be difficult not to be able to just pop over to, you know, if you did have family here, not to just be able to pop over and, and see your family um, if you did have family here. So for me, I've just tried to um, do as much as I can in, indoors, so kind of exercising indoors if I can, trying to sit on the balcony if I can to get some sun. Um, and yeah, just, just and trying to connect with family as much as I can back in London. Uh, just to kind of uh, you know connect and because it can be really isolating as well so just trying to 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 make sure I'm connecting with with family and friends but uh, it's been a challenging time to be honest and and a lot to to adapt to as well especially given we don't know when it's going to last when it's going to end as well so having to deal with so what, what what do you do you know how do you plan for the future because as you probably notice I like I'm quite a planner I said I said earlier I was like I like I'm an organizer and a planner so the idea of not knowing what's going to happen or what I'm going to be doing next week next month next six months is is um is it's not easy but I guess I'm trying my best to adapt <laughs> okay I, I guess like like most of us really um many were forced to to innovate in in a very short amount of time to change their habits, the way they work out, the way they interact with colleagues, the way we run businesses um, at the moment, which is all, I mean, mainly online, mainly very digital. Um, We might see some positives coming out of that, hopefully for the future in terms of how we are set up, how we are dealing. Now we do our podcasts online, um, something that we usually don't do because we we meet obviously uh, the people that we have on the show but beside that positivity have you spoken to people who I mean because it's your it's your professional background you you know more uh, what what you're talking about than me or or any of us have you spoken to people who are dealing really with maybe severe anxiety during that time of course, you know, there's there's a lot of a lot of anxiety at the moment, a lot of anxiety because, you know, I guess one of the things if we think one of the things that really maintain anxiety and trigger anxiety is uncertainty. 
you know, uncertainty triggers worries, you know, and, you know, people are worried about their health, they're worried about their families, they're worried about their businesses. A lot of businesses that were, you know, not that weren't online before are having to quickly adapt. And that, that comes with a lot of anxiety, business might be going down for them. And, you know, there's a lot of anxiety about work as well. A lot of people are losing their jobs and all worried about losing their jobs or worried about, uh, you know, having their salaries reduced or being made redundant. Um, people who may have suffered with anxiety before are kind of relapsing now as well. Um, you know, people who have had a history of anxiety are finding that they're even more anxious now and, you know, uh, not able to function as well as they were before. And that can be really scary for them, because, especially if they were doing quite well before all of this and they were kind of, you know, going through the, the process of healing and, and getting back to them their old self. And then suddenly this happened and then they are back into an episode of anxiety um, you know, there are many forms of anxiety and, and, you know, some people struggle with kind of checking behaviours as well. So kind of, clean, you know, you might have heard of OCD already, cleaning and, and checking. OCD isn't just uh, cleaning, but it can, it, can, it can affect so many different parts of someone's life. And, uh, you know, those, you know, or some people that are more health anxious as well now are having their anxiety even more even you know their, their anxiety is even much worse they're watching the news constantly and addicted to watching the news because that's their only way of getting certainty and and I guess going back to what I said you know anxiety is all about uncertainty um, and it's triggered by not knowing because as humans obviously we are programmed to uh, to our brain is kind of programmed to want predictability and want certainty and our brain always tries to um, get that certainty and get that predictability and obviously now that's not not there at all so your your, your mind is going to be um, you know in a real sense state of survival mode right now um, in a sense and, and, and wanting to to try and protect itself because I guess ev you know from an evolutionary point of view that's what our brain is designed to do is help us survive um, you know and help us want to get things to be predictable and certain and now we don't have any certainty we don't have any predict that you can't predict very much uh, everything that we've known has changed so people are going to be extremely anxious so there, there, there is a lot of anxiety in, in our community here but across the world um, completely right what you say um, maybe a follow-up on on the news aspect that you said um, People are trying to get some sort of certainty back into their into their daily life, into their routines. Uh, is watching news the best way of coping with that? Um, I think it's it, with anything. It's a balance, isn't it? You know, um, why do we watch the news? We watch it to try and get information. But sometimes um, that inf we can. Sometimes we are watching the same news over and over again, and that actually maintains the anxiety because you're not really getting any more certainty. Are you? you're just getting an update on? Okay, this is happening. But there is no control either. We, we can't control what's happening. So you're getting a lot of this information that's telling your brain, you know, OK, you know, now thousands of other people have died and this has happened and that's happened. And it's, it, it's if we if we watch too much of that and we're constantly, you know, so I know some people have updates on their on their phone. Anytime a new update comes, it gets, you know, it, you know, it, it comes up on their phone. Um, so they could be relaxing and, and, and looking after themselves and then suddenly they, they, they see that and then they're kind of back there again. So I think it is definitely a balance. Um, I would definitely recommend minim minimising how, how often you watch the news uh, because it does maintain the anxiety, given that because you're still not in control. And I think, again, anxiety is, you know, when we're anxious, we try to gain control over our external environment. And mm. sometimes watching the news can, instead of it being a form of information, it can turn into a coping mechanism to try and manage the anxiety. And then um, people can become almost addicted to that, you know, you know, to kind of watching it over and over again because they feel... Um, it's a perceived sense of uh, getting some some control, but it's perceived. It's not real, 
because you still don't have control over what's happening. Okay. Um, sp speaking of that, maybe becoming it, be it becomes almost addictive. Um, I always try and and differentiate between, uh, and this is maybe a way that I I cope with it to differentiate between the emotional reaction that all of that uncertainty causes and as much as possible a logic behavior mapped to that um, in terms of what needs to be done there, there are just things that logically need to be done to contain that as much as possible the the outbreak or the spread of that uh, virus um, but of course you cannot you cannot always act rationally maybe um, Do you, do you have a take of that, the emotional approach versus maybe what would be logic for, for many of us? I think that's a really, really good point. Um, and I think a lot, a lot of us, you know, ideally want to be logical beings, um, you know, and, you know, we want to, you know, we like to th look at things in a very logical way. But if we look at how our brain was designed, you know, um, our brain has two parts You know, we've got, uh, obviously, you know, our fight or flight response, which is part of, you know, the back part of our brain, which is we call the limbic system. And then we've got the prefrontal cortex, which is more the logical part of our brain. Um, the thing is, is that going back to the fact that our, our brain was designed for survival and our brain was designed to keep us safe. And so if... Sometimes we think we're being logical, but actually the survival part of our brain takes over and overrides that. And that's helpful in circumstances where we are in danger. So if a car's coming towards you, uh, then of course, if your logical brain was in gear, then you, it, by the time you analyze what color is that car, what's, you know, you'll get hit, you know. So our, the, 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 our limbic, you know, our fight or flight part of our brain has to kick in gear in order to get you out. You can't, you don't have time to analyze. You, it needs to just get you out of there, which is why people either flee, they either freeze or they kind of, they try to defend themselves in any way they can. And that is an automatic response that, that the body has to try and um, keep itself safe. Now, what happens is that can also happen in situations that aren't da that dangerous as well. Our, sometimes our mind misinterprets situations to be far more dangerous than it actually is. And um, as you know, so when we're watching the news, what that's, you know, and we're kind of worrying, our brain, it, it, that's telling our brain, we're in danger, we're in danger, we're in danger. Does that make sense? So our brain is being overrided by our survival part of the brain. Um, so that's why you're kind of feeling that sense of anxiety, you know, that physical sense of anxiety. Of course, when you've got physical symptoms like tension, you're shaking, you can't concentrate, you're, you know, your heart's beating really quickly, that's, it's very difficult to think logically during that time because that, you know, that, that you know, it, it, it's difficult to think, okay, because the emotional part is going to be much stronger. But what you suggested, you know, was asking yourself questions like, you know, what can I do about this right now? You know, what can, what, what, how, what can I do that's in my control right now that I can maybe write down or I can, and, and that is a good way of trying to push your mind into kind of the, you know, trying to think more logically in that situation. And I guess what, what the reason I'm going over, you know, the, the fight or flight response and how that's a natural process because is because often people think that anxiety is a form of weakness, um, that if they're experiencing anxiety, that it means that something's wrong with them and that it's an abnormal um, reaction when actually anxiety is a, a pre-programmed survival um, mechanism that we need for our survival. So it's a very important as part of us managing this uncertainty, managing the anxiety, it's very important that we normalize and acknowledge that this is a normal response. You know, our body is in a, our body feels that it's in danger and we just have to remind ourselves actually we are safe we're not in danger, let's focus on what we can control, because at that moment it's kind of almost a bit all over the place trying to, to, to keep you safe really, that's ultimately yeah. what it's trying to do. Many, many, many important points that you I think mentioned, uh, if I may jump in for, for a second, um, but then anxiety and maybe that, yeah, that pre-programmed kind of um, 
reaction is then different for for every individual, isn't it? Um, because some maybe react a bit more extreme to it. Some try and be as as logic and as calm as they can be. Um, so I guess it's something that is that we need to um, judge on a very individual level. Would you say if you feel really physical symptoms um, at one stage that we, you were talking about, is it time to seek help from a from a professional or? speak to to family and friends i think that, again that's a really good good point it is definitely very individual while um anxiety and you know anxiety comes in very different forms it comes in you feel phys anxiety in itself is the emotion that you feel when you're when you're in that state and then there's physical symptoms and then there's thoughts as well worries that you have as well so the worries often trigger the physical responses and then and the emotional response and then the person what differentiates person to person is how they respond mm -hmm. okay it's the behavior that's what differentiates people from each other so some people might have more helpful coping mechanisms where they might okay try and tell themselves okay it's what you know it's normal i'm anxious it's okay what can i do right now to try and control my what can i do, what's in my control right now they might minimize uh you know watching the tv to a certain point they might kind of exercise and eat well and you know do all the things that will help their their body and their mind together and then understandably sometimes and this can this can happen to anyone because um, anxiety is not just a, a, a fixed thing we go it's going it goes through a spe spectrum which means that sometimes in, in a person's life you might go through through some periods where you feel more anxious and it might be more difficult to cope and at times where you feel it's easier to cope so anyone could be at any point on that spectrum at any given time throughout their life depending on what's happened to them now at this at this moment where everyone is going through this global uh, um, pandemic is that you know some people this has thrown them off completely over their coping mechanism some people might have had really good coping mechanisms before but that involved going outside exercising meeting with friends you know um, they were doing things that helped their anxiety and suddenly they're in in the house and they have no distraction they're not engaging with anybody and now their worries are constantly there so what's happening is then they, they they can't they're finding it more difficult to control their worries then what they're doing is watching the tv for so long you know because that's kind of you know how they're coping and then um they're not they might not be sleeping you know etc so what differentiates a person to person is their coping mechanism also their history you know if they've struggled yes. with it before um then it's it's you know, it, it, it's going to contribute to how well they're doing now as well. It's also obviously research. There is genetic predisposition as well. Some people might be a little bit more vulnerable to experiencing anxiety, but um, some people might have a genetic predisposition, but might have coping mechanisms that mean they never experience a clinical anxiety disorder in their life at all because of how their coping mechanism. The challenge is a lot of people don't know what helpful and unhelpful coping mechanisms are. So they fall into these traps of, you know, unhelpful without realizing that actually what they're doing is maintaining the anxiety. And with your question with regard to when should they seek help, I, you know, I, all, I would always say it's helpful to get, you know, um, to, to try and work on it as early as possible because I guess what when you're seeking help what you're doing is you're it's it's you're getting the education you're getting the information around okay what is what is helpful what's not helpful I know therapy is something that people often professional help is often a place where people go when they're so when they're struggling and they've they've struggled for so long and that they feel that they haven't been coping for so long but i would always say why wait till you you've suffered that long why wait until because you know why not get the information early you know um and and you use those coping mechanisms before you before things do escalate and if things have escalated already then you know that's also okay that's also a good time so 
uh, there is not the perfect time to seek professional help because as an, a clinician myself, I always encourage people to go as early as possible um, in order as a prevention so that it doesn't get to an anx- a, a clinical anxiety disorder. It doesn't become dep- clinical depression um, because it, it, it's, you know, the only thing that the way we diagnose clinical depression and anxiety is based on how much of an impact it's having on their functioning and also how long they've been experiencing the symptoms. But the symptoms are still the same. If someone's got an anxiety disorder or if they've got, um, you know, if they're experiencing anxiety or depression. Okay. So that's quite a long-winded response. I I think why I didn't didn't cut in there was just uh, very important. And it's not for me to, to... to judge, but I think that it was just very, very valuable information um, for many who will who will hear that and who will watch that. Um, you, you were speaking of different behavior that kind of are, are triggered by anxiety, are triggered by worries. Um, we see, luckily, not so much in Qatar, but around the world, very, let's say, interesting behavior um, where we see people hoarding things like toilet paper and. Okay, I almost get the the pasta, rice, canned goods. Fair enough. You want to be prepared in case. But toilet paper, um, where where do we get that behavior from? Uh, Maybe you can talk a bit, help us understand that. I think it's kind of a sense of, I guess if we think about what, you know, again, anxiety, when someone's anxious, they they want to, they're in survival mode, aren't they? They're in a state of panic. When you're in a state of panic, you can't really think logically at that moment because, and the more you kind of feed into that through behaviours, because what often reinforces our anxiety and our worries is behaviour. So if you're if you fear that something's going to happen, so a lot of these people, are, are mis, you know, understand, you know, they might be fearing, oh, okay, I'm going to run out of food, which is understandable. But they might toilet paper. I t- typically don't understand either <laughs> the whole toilet paper thing, but I understand kind of the behaviour because it's it's coming from it's an anxious behaviour. It's 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 an it's a, it's a, a behaviour that's triggered by anxiety, the survival part of our brain. So. Um, it's very easy sometimes to respond to the anxiety in a way that might seem helpful at the time, but actually it's not helpful. So them going out there and panic buying all of these things, they're not going to feel any better when they get home because they're still going. The worries are still going to be there. And doesn't doesn't trigger that maybe in in other people who might be calm and could cope maybe in a much better way? Doesn't that trigger others to to panic and? And ultimately, this is is an impact that we that we then have on society. Because um, if one would behave like that, two or three society uh, supply chains could cope with that. But now we see, and I see it in in Europe, shelves are empty because one triggers another. And I feel like is this a behavior that you that you're familiar with that you can explain? I think the the behaviour itself is, I think, very, very unique because um, we haven't been in a situation like this. But I think, you know, the the thing is, is that when it's a global response at the moment, people, because people are seeing other people react in a particular way, they think they think to themselves, I think it's psychological, but also it's the societal impact as well, because if... If people are seeing on the news or they're seeing out so people going out and panic buying and there's a lot of people, they're going to think, OK, there's something wrong with me. I, I must be doing something wrong. You know, I'm I'm not going there panic buying, but all of these people are. So I must I must also kind of join in with them. So, mm-hmm. you know, so it kind of becomes a secondary effect. So those people might be coping OK, but because they're seeing hundreds and thousands of people and then they also the images of the empty shelves can also trigger anxiety within somebody that might have been okay in the first place um so then they kind of this sense of oh my god what if i what if we run out of food because ultimately that's the that's the ultimate fear for them isn't it for a lot for a lot of us is run out the worst case scenario run out of food not having anywhere to go to the toilet, you know, not having toilet <laughs> tissue, not, you know, um, what's the word, you know, um, people, you know, dying of, of the disease, loved one dying of the virus. So these are fundamentally the worst case scenarios. And and what we try to do 
often in our behavior regardless of what the fear is is we try to stop what stop that from happening that's what our mm. behavior is doing we're trying to gain control people are out there trying to gain regain control regain certainty um and and but but they're doing it in a very in a way that means that it's affecting it's a ripple effect isn't it it's affecting the world globally and like i said people that might have been dealing with it quite well are then seeing the news and seeing empty shelves and then it's triggering that sense of panic in themselves as well. uh the, the people who are dealing quite well with it um i i guess this it is so hard to to really see who is doing well and who is maybe just dealing with anxiety in a in a more passive way or maybe puts it puts it yeah inside back back to to him or herself um how how do you see someone who is maybe or how is it how can we explain a behavior of of people who seem to not care at all um everyone who's and I still see people especially in Europe still being outside trying to to gather trying to to really not understand the rules and and regulations that that governments and communities put in place right now is that a different way of dealing with it or is it just pure ignorance sure i i mean it could be i guess you know when with hum, humans it's you especially when it comes to generally feeling anxious they can either take the more avoidant response or they can go into that kind of the more checking and the active response to try and regain mm -hmm. control um and avoidance is also might seem like a way of control as well because the person's actively not wanting to do anything about it and there might be people out there who are, who are so distressed by the experience but are completely trying to avoid thinking about it and trying to avoid as if you know pretend it's not there at all and that in itself is a coping mechanism of anxiety some people choose to avoid and not and whether it's avoid thinking about it but also avoid doing anything related to the virus or related to the situation not change and the course avoid of action, course really. Of action really exactly and not do anything and try to just mm. block it out from their mind you know it's not the most helpful coping mechanism but people do do that and then the people that are going out panic buying these are typically people you know in terms of response they're kind of taking more of an active response they they're wanting to gain control through action through you know um their environment you know there's food i need to make sure there's enough food in the house i need to make sure there's enough so they're acting on on but it's it's both responses of anxiety you know you either take the avoidant approach or the active approach and but and some some people it's just if we're going to die we're going to die you know that kind of philosophical kind of a sense of <laughs> that there's nothing i can do about it but i'm not going to you know and so there is helpful and unhelpful and i i think it's important to recognize that a, a lot of these people that are going out there acting as if nothing's wrong and just carrying on it are, are a mixture of people who are avoidant don't really want to deal with that there's a problem there's also i guess if we think of ourselves as humans we we're seeing beings aren't we we we're visual beings and you know this virus you can't see it can you so yeah. it also kind of triggers a sense of well i can't see it then i'm just going to carry on um and it's not the mo again it's not the most healthiest response but there are people out there that are are more feel that seeing is believing really you know but you would say at the same time well can you not see these people dying you know the news and and some people they have theories that this is to do with something else you know this isn't a virus this is something else you know and and there's a conspiracy theory about what's go what else might be going on and those also are those people as well that are saying actually this isn't related to a virus at all and I'm going to just carry on with how I was doing so it's definitely a mixture of of people but with very different uh viewpoints and perspectives because it all goes back down to how you interpret the situation isn't it that's what differentiates how you then respond um yeah. is based on that interpretation uh, brilliant uh, thank you thank you for elaborating on on that point so much um like you said i think we see a lot of different behavior um it's a dynamic that is new for everyone or most of us 
uh, most most likely and something like you said earlier that happened so suddenly and in in a in a rapid way that we need to adapt the the way we live and need to need to change really common behavior and common things that we that we would do on a daily basis um, very good is there something I guess there's not one solution that fits all uh, I can cannot imagine but is there something that you would maybe that you can give people on their way to say they are ideal ways of of coping with the situation or there are some techniques that you can that you should should apply if you can uh, obviously keeping a balanced a balanced way of living i would say in in all sorts is for, it's personally helpful for me to get your still get your exercise in try and still get your healthy healthy food in um, talk to friends and family not maybe on a one to one but how we do it right now over over the phone are there more things that you can that you can do right now definitely um there's uh, definitely i w i would say and, and i think the first thing is recognizing what's helpful and not helpful in in behavior and what you're doing and responses and i think it's it's really you know important to think about also your you know looking after your body health you know your food you know your nutrition your sleep uh your um exercise activity and not even just ex rigorous exercise but any movement in your body that's going to really help but the reason why it's it's so important personally you know um obviously as someone who's very passionate about mental health and i think this this global pandemic could go go two ways people are either going to be more resilient and learn really helpful coping mechanisms during this time or we're going to get people at the end of it with various anxiety disorders and depression um and i fear that what based on what's what's happening that it might be the latter that people are actually hopefully when this is over I fear that people are going to because of the coping mechanisms that they you're using what I'm seeing and what people are are doing is actually they're going to come out um suffering a lot more by because they've developed these habits now and they they're just going to continue it and that's and that's what concerns me so I think what the question and the, that you've raised is incredibly important because you know what differentiates you leaving out of this period with you know a, a healthy still healthy and mentally and physically is your coping mechanisms so um as as i mentioned the first thing is making you know one of the main things is uh because we see the body and the mind separately but what we have to understand is that it's very connected when you're stressed and when you're anxious you have to recognize that your body produces a stress hormone that actually weakens your immune system it's called cortisol and it weakens your immune system so if you're eating well and you're you know you're eating well but then you're not looking after your health your mental health and you're kind of stressed and anxious and you know you're not cope you're not utilizing helpful coping mechanism then what you're actually doing is the food isn't going to be you still got this stress hormone in your body that's weakening your immune system So that's why it's important that you see your mind and your body as one that you just as you're eating well and you're exercising and you're doing all of these things um that you're also checking in with your 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 mental health as well. So so um kind of exercise can work both ways because exercise is good for your mental health as well. It actually helps uh, you know we we do always recommend doing some exercise. but mentally mental health wise firstly i think it's very important initially to recognize and acknowledge that anxiety and what you're feeling is okay and the reason i say that is because a lot of people are are suppressing that a lot of people are um kind of saying no 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 i should be able to cope better i should be you know because i'm feeling anxious it means i'm not coping well feeling anxiety is not a sign that you're not coping well that is really important to know okay. um but how you respond to the feeling anxiety that is what's important so what what i mean by that is when you respond to it you have to remind yourself okay whatever i'm experiencing right now that's a normal experience anxiety is normal so be compassionate towards yourself be you know kind to yourself in terms of don't be self critical towards yourself because of what you're feeling um the other thing i would say is 
uh, th thought wise is you're going to have a lot of worries go through your mind when it comes to worries and thoughts you have to recognize that your brain can't differentiate between an ac actual experience and a perceived experience so if you're imagining worst case scenarios your body is going your brain thinks it's actually happening right now does that make sense? So that that makes sense. That that's, makes sense. That's, that's, that's I think, I think it's, new it's new to me. Uh, it's new to me. It's nice that it's you nice that you that you map it out, that like, map like, it that. out like, like that. Yeah. No. And, and that this is something most people don't know. To be honest, is is when they're that you know when they're having a thought, a negative thought, or a, a worry more so in this case, is your brain doesn't know the difference between what's perceived and what's actually happened. So your body is reacting to it as if it's already happened, which is why, it, and that's why you get the physical symptoms. Because it's in your mind, your body's thinking, you, you imagine, okay, I'm going to die, or my loved one's going to die, or, or I'm going to catch this virus. Then your body, you're telling your body, you're in danger. You're, you're in danger. Your body then creates this fight or flight response, the physical response. It tries to, you know, you start, your, your heart starts racing. You start not breathing properly. Uh, you, you, you kind of go into this state of kind of fr f tension and overwhelm, feeling overwhelmed. And that's just your body's alarm system because you've told your brain something's going to happen. So it thinks it's happening. So what's really going to be important is writing down your worries okay we have two types of worries we've got current worries and we've got hypothetical worries okay current worries are things that you can solve you know so if you're constantly watching the news one of the things that you can problem solve is minimizing giving yourself okay i'm only going to watch the news once once a day for an hour or half an hour or i'm going to watch it at these times i'm not going to watch it at all during these other times that's something you can control right mm. With hypothetical worries, hypothetical worries are things that you cannot control at all. So you're thinking, oh my God, my auntie over there, you know, she's going to she's gonna die from this or, and she hasn't even got a virus. No, there's no evidence to suggest that this is happening. But then you've got all of these and our brain can be very animated. We could, our brain can come up, it's very creative. We can come up with all sorts of scenarios. So differentiating between what's current and hypothetical is helpful um, like I said current is things that you can control and problem solves or actual problems that you have outside of this pandemic it might be your bills if you're you know if you're in debt and that's something you can do right you can start paying your bills properly in this case it's things like limiting the news it's about checking in with friends if, if you're worried about someone but then you're not you don't know anything you know one way you can you know you have you can problem solve that is by calling are you okay how is everything going whatever but the hypothetical worries the problem with that is there's there's this you can't solve it there's there's nothing you can do because there's no evidence that it's happening does that make sense yes so definitely. Definitely. writing down your worries um writing down your thoughts because also writing things down kind of distance you from your thoughts because often we see our uh, we see ourselves as our thoughts and our worries. We don't differentiate our thoughts and our worries from ourselves, but that's, that's reality is actually, you are not your thoughts. You are not your worries. Um, it's important to distance yourself and write things down. Also breathing techniques can help as well, and mindfulness that can help because if we go back to um, what I said earlier, that this stress hormone is being released into your body, um, by t taking slower breath and doing slow bro breathing techniques, what that's doing is, is taking your body from survival mode to recovery mode, okay? Um, so that actually switches off the alarm okay. that your body is in. So breathing techniques, mindfulness, I hear a lot about it, but mindfulness is just basically you're doing present moment focus. So what you're doing is... Um, you might be doing the chores and you're engaging in the actual task itself. So it's like a, you're just trying to be more present focused. OK, it's not necessarily meditation or etc. It's just trying to be present focused and focusing, let's say, on the sound, on the smell, on the, um, you know, what some the texture of something, you know, you might want to listen to something and then really tune into what the instruments are, for example. What that does is remember when you're worried, you're in the future. Yeah, your mind is in the future. So what present moment focus does is it gets your mind out of the future, puts it in the present and that switches off the alarm system.
because your mind think, it, it, something something very very powerful that you said is and i think we we can maybe use it just in in the reverse way as well um to say as much as we are capable of imagining all sorts of scenarios that can happen like bad for us i think we can also mentally just put us in a good place um as much as possible and of course not not really avoiding rules and regulations not 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 caring about the situation but putting yourself in a mindset that is positive that maybe sees the good things that is grateful for what is happening right now is appreciative of of what you have that your family is healthy that your friends are good um and just like i think that that personally works works for me to see something positive in that to really come out i don't want to say on the other side but after after that period with really appreciating every everything everything even even more uh, every single thing that we are that we are doing um just spoke uh, spoke to my wife yesterday and said I, i can only imagine how much going to the restaurant and sitting down and just enjoying a meal um for the first time or for definitely for a certain period after after the corona pandemic uh, will mean to us um you you can enjoy that in a in a completely different way and i feel if we put ourselves and our mindset in a in a positive state um as much as we can by limiting news by speaking to loved ones by being in the moment like you said by doing things we enjoy listening to music um uh, and keeping that balance that's a really um you know definitely you know gratitude and being because oh, you know worry you know worry is thinking about the worst case scenario but your brain also has the capacity to it's the best not going to scenarios maybe <laughs> exactly but i guess it's also not but it, it has to be thinking positively and and being grateful that's a real intentional action we do our our brain will by default go to the worst case scenario that's kind of again going back to our brain is programmed to survive so it's going to go what's the worst case scenario you know so yeah. that's going to be a very natural response to us whereas that's why um you know kind of writing down all the things you're grateful for rec- you know recognizing the things that is actually what you're doing is you're intentionally diverting your attention to the things that are more you know the things that you're grateful for the things that are going to give you more of a sense of enjoyment a sense of pleasure of knowing because remember like i said because you're if you imagine you know things that are you know the, the good things your brain has no choice but to respond to that and that comes with physical responses as well and 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 what you said that that uh, mind and body are are one i think as much as we maybe exercise our physical health we we should exercise our mental health as well by doing things like that by daily habits i call it uh you know it's like you know a child when you see a child you know and they hurt their foot what's the first thing they do they know they they, they know um to go to the cupboard to get a plaster but how do we, but how but do they know how to deal with psychological injuries you know like failure rejection kind of feeling down do they know what to do with that and a lot of us didn't learn to do that we didn't we didn't have we didn't go to school for that we didn't go to like mm-hmm. a a school for that so it's you know it, it's it's important to to recognize that in with yourself it has to be a daily habit it has to be habits that you incorporate just like exercising like you said your body you have to exercise your 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 mind and and incorporate kind of uh, uh you know coping mechanisms and routine that incorporate your mental health as well and just like and when you and when we take sometimes we minimize things like gratitude journals or and you know just not even journals just being saying out loud what you're grateful for every single morning or or, or even laughing and and you know laughing and you know, with somebody what just like i said when you're in a stressed when you're stressed or anxious cortisol is released a stress hormone but when you're laughing and you're in a state of good a, a positive mood oxytocin is the opposite of that stress hormone that's released in your body and that's a hormone that's um a hormone that actually is you know when mothers are when their mothers give birth that's the bonding home that's the first bonding home and that's released when the baby's on their on their chest so it's a it's a good we call it the a good feeling um what mm. this the the chemical that releases that so 
it's important to recognize that when you're doing things, it's actually having a biological impact as well. Because like you said, our mind and our body are very much interlinked um, and they're not, they're not separate. They're not separate at all. So I definitely, I, I do the same with the gratitude, you know, listing five things in the morning that I'm grateful for. Because again, your mind isn't going to come up with it by default unless you've been practicing it for, for, for a long time. You know, it, it, you know, it won't it won't come up if you haven't been doing it for a while. So, what I would recommend is always, if you're not new, if you're new to it, just write them, write it down, and intentionally think about, okay, what are five things I'm grateful for? I'm grateful for my, you know, my my family are still okay. I'm okay. I'm, you know, under a roof. You know, all of the things that you can you can mention, but mm. doing it regularly yeah. is very important. Uh, wow, that has been. Um Longer than we expected, but it's been so so helpful, I think, and so valuable. Um, so, really thank glad. you, thank, thank you. you for your time. Thank you for your time. Um, I'm, I'm very I'm sure. thank you for I'm having sure. me. Thank you. It's been oh. a real pleasure to have this conversation with you and to and to talk about this very important topic. So, uh, it's a, it's definitely an honor to to be here and to be able to to have this discussion with you. So, thank you so much for having me as well. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Have a great day, okay? <laughs> you too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. I hope you liked that video. Oh, thank you. Ah, thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, please give the video a like. Subscribe to our channel for more interesting and inspiring content. Comment down below what you, li what you would like us to post. Don't miss out on any of our videos by turning on the notifications on our channel. Somewhere here, I guess. You can find all our social media links in the description below. Make sure to keep yourself updated with our content. See you in the next video.